So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to English Not Permitted, the only channel on YouTube focusing entirely on foreign language film and TV shows. So the topic for today is the top five countries for producing cinema. And by that, I basically mean which country makes the best films. Now, I want to focus on the country's output entirely, so we're not going to focus on the best film from each country, but basically all the different kinds of films that come out of the country. So without further ado, let's get on with the list. Number five on the list is China. So China, as we know, is a huge country, but actually its output of films doesn't quite match the size of the country. But actually over the last decade or so, that's began to change rapidly. Nowadays, they're producing a lot more cinema. These films have increased in budget, and this doesn't seem like something that's gonna slow down in the future. So you, we might see China higher up on this list in the next 10 years. So what does Chinese cinema do well? Well, number one is Kung Fu movies. This is kind of the pinnacle of the Chinese films and the one thing they do better than anyone else. There's a lot of different types of films. China, in fact, has its own genre of wuxia films, which I've covered in another video, which you can check out somewhere along here, where the heroes have special abilities, for example, the ability to fly. And this can be seen in films like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Hero, among others. Also, in terms of Kung Fu, you've got Ip Man, which is a really great Kung Fu series. Now, historically, they haven't had great action films, but this is beginning to change. We've seen this in the last couple of years with the film Wolf Warriors. China is now willing to make big budget action movies. Now I'm quite interested to see where this goes and to see if they can actually compete with Hollywood in terms of special effects. Another reason Chinese cinema is great is because they like to focus a lot on their long and unique history. I lived in China for four years. Chinese people are very proud of their history and this shows through in their films. There are some really great Chinese historical epics. Just to name a few, there's a couple of Zhang Yimou films, uh, Raid to Red Lantern is one of them. Another fantastic film is Farewell My Concubine, based during the Cultural Revolution in Beijing. And finally, if I cheat a little bit, depending on who you ask, and include Hong Kong films, you've got In the Mood for Love, which is set in 1960s Hong Kong. And if you delve deeper into Chinese cinema, there's lots of films about the ancient Chinese empires too. Now, what do they do not quite so well? Why isn't China higher? Well, for one thing, they have strict censorship laws, and this kind of affects what can and can't be said, and what kind of films can be made in the country. And going forward, this is something that's gonna really hold it back. I think if you've got such tight censorship laws, it's really gonna scare directors about what they can and can't say, and eventually affect the films that they're making. So, to number four on the list, and it's Mexico. So what makes Mexican cinema so great? Well, first of all, one thing they do better than pretty much anyone else is films about the drug war. Now, unfortunately, the drug war is still raging on in Mexico, but fortunately for us, that means they make some pretty good films about it. Films like Miss Bala and El Infierno focus directly on the drug trade and its impacts. And films like Amores Peros, they also focus on kind of the underworld of Mexico City. So Mexico is definitely the best country to focus on gangster films outside of Hollywood. They also have some world-class directors. So Guillermo del Toro is one of my favorite directors. I think he does such a great job of blending fantasy elements into kind of realistic settings. Alejandro González Iñárritu is also an excellent director that got his start in Mexico. And the same with Alfonso Cuaron, who got the best picture of the Oscars for his film Roma set in Mexico City. Now I would rank this higher, but one of the problems with Mexican cinema is for me, that they don't do a very good job of keeping hold of their, their directors. Those three directors, for example, they've all done most of their best work outside of Mexico, with some of them winning Oscars for their English speaking films rather than their Spanish speaking films. So if they could do a little bit better job of keeping hold of the directors, that would improve Mexican cinema even more. So for number three, we're heading to Japan. Now Japan has a really long cinema history. Now, when a lot of people think of Japan or Japanese cinema, their mind goes straight to anime. And this is one thing they do better than anywhere else in the world. Personally, I think the Studio Ghibli films are completely unique. I'm not a huge anime fan. I've only seen a number of the most famous ones, but they're still really spectacular films. What I also love about Japanese cinema is that it's willing to take risks and do things that you just don't see in other types of cinema. A famous example of this would be the film Battle Royale. Now this is kind of a cult classic because it's just an absolute bloodbath. Basically, a load of school kids get sent to an island and they all have to kill each other. It sounds a bit ridiculous, but that's why it's so great. And it's a particularly violent, daring example that I just don't think would get made in Hollywood. Now, final reason I think Japanese cinema is so high up on the list is actually something I haven't watched too much of yet. And perhaps in the future, Japanese cinema will go up in my rankings. And it's because of their historical epics. 
So if you look at the list of the greatest foreign language films of all time, there's a lot of old Japanese films on there, especially by Akira Kurosawa and also Yasujiro Ozo. Now, I haven't seen too many of these films. I've only seen one Kurosawa film in Run, but in the 40s, 50s and 60s, they did a lot to change cinema. And I'm looking forward to on this channel, watching and talking about some of these in the future. And now on our list, it takes us to Numero Dos, España, Spain. Now, I love Spanish cinema. I lived in Spain for three years and Spanish cinema is probably the one I'm most familiar with. So call me a little bit biased. However, I do think that they do pretty much everything well, even though they don't have the biggest budgets. In recent times, I actually think this is the country that produces the best thrillers. Films like The Invisible Guest, The Skin I Live In, The Marshlands. Similarly, they're really creative when it comes to horror films. Wreck, which was made in the early 2000s, did a lot to improve the horror genre. And films like The Orphanage and The Devil's Backbone are just really creepy, creepy ghost films. More recently, there's been more twisted ones. The Platform on Netflix it was a really twisted, really creepy tale as well. The standout director from Spain being Pedro Almodovar. His films are obviously quite difficult to define. They're romantic, they're comedies, they're dramas, they're thrillers, all at the same time. And I think you can see his influence throughout Spanish cinema, where most films do pretty much everything well. Now, on to the final one on our list. Number one, can you guess what it is? It's South Korea. So why is South Korea number one on my list? Well, personally, I think it's the only international cinema that is trying to compete with Hollywood. They are trying to produce every different type of film. They have all kinds of different genres. And most importantly, they are making, producing, and financing new films in Korea. And I think a great example of this is the director Bong Joon-ho. He'd gone on to make films in the US. He was getting US budgets and he was able to be enticed back to make the film Parasite, which obviously went on to win the Oscar for best film. But what I think is most impressive is that they were able to get him back from Hollywood. And I think if you're a Korean director right now, it's a great time to be making films because so long as you've got a good enough script, that film can be made. And it appears to me that cinema is very, very important to the Korean people. A couple of years ago, I was lucky enough to go to Busan International Film Festival, which is the biggest film festival in Asia. And when I went there, there was plenty of people there. People took cinema very, very seriously. So similar to Japanese cinema, Korean cinema is also not afraid to take risks. I think this can be highlighted in some of their top films. If you look at a film like Oh Boy, it's so dark, it's so edgy and so violent. A film like Parasite isn't afraid to be a comedy, yet also have sharp critiques on society, yet also be really fucking violent. And I think that's why so many people loved it. Finally, another great film that's came out of Korea is A Train to Busan. And I think what this shows more than anything else is that the Korean people are willing to finance big budget films. This film was a big budget Korean zombie film, and I don't see anywhere else in the world willing to pump that kind of money into making a film outside of Hollywood. I think in the near future, Korea is gonna produce more and more great films. Okay, and that's the end of my list. Please remember that this list is subjective. If you have different ideas, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, and if you're interested in hearing me talk more about international cinema from all over the world, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I'm Jack Taylor. This is English Not Permitted. Goodbye.